Get your Detroit DIY apparel today. Check out the store in the link provided in the description. Thank you. Today we're going to be removing that window and installing a glass sliding door. Shouldn't be too bad of a job, but I believe there might be some wiring down below and I might have to add a plug inside. Who knows what we're going to find or what we're going to run into, but we're going to figure it out and figure it out right now. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Dirdorf and this is Detroit DIY. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is just start removing the exterior here and see what I got behind it. Let's get going. Alright, I'm going to keep plugging away and we'll come back when I get this off. I've got a little bit of the siding off. i got to pull it all off, but this is good for right now. I wanted to try and figure out if this was a new construction window or replacement. I looked inside, I couldn't see any screws going through the sides of the pane holding it in place or the frame holding it in place. Um, so I pulled away some wood and it is a new construction window with a nail flange. So. That's good to see and it'll obviously be a little bit of work to get it out more than if it was a replacement window. So let's take a look. So this is what I was talking about about the nailing flange and as you can see I'll have to continue removing the wood. This was rotten. I knew it was rotten last year and part of the reason why this project needed to take place and we just decided to go ahead and put a glass sliding door in the place of a window. This window's old. It's tired but i just need to pull away some more wood around here it's fighting me a little bit it's got some big nails i'll have to remove all of this old house wrap and for some reason they put wire lath in the eave but it's completely closed up so i don't understand what that was about exactly but i guess they had some laying around they needed to get rid of but at any rate i'm going to go ahead and get these guys out get the rest of the siding off then we'll get everything laid out and we'll start cutting this door in I've got most everything here removed that I need to remove. A couple more pieces of this styrofoam insulation, one more board, and then I'll be able to start cutting this wall board back and see exactly what I've got. I knocked a little hole at the bottom and I knocked a little hole at the top. I don't see any wires, so that's a good thing. I will um, continue to get this pulled off and then we'll come back and uh, lay the opening out and start getting some wall board off. There was a little patch of wallboard right here that I just pulled off and I found some newspaper. So this should be a pretty good indication of the date that this was put on. There's not much insulation that I'm finding anywhere else, but they obviously used some newspaper for some insulation here. Let's see what the date is. Thursday, November 27th, 1975. Interesting. So, it's obvious that this window was put in or something was done here in, you know, 1975. It's actually November, so it must be done in the spring. I don't see them coming here in the winter and ripping out and ripping the wall apart and ripping windows out. But at any rate, I cannot locate any builder board plywood anything in this area so i'm going to have to save this it's going to take me a little time i'm just going to have to remove these nails 
it mucks up the builder board a little bit right where the nail is but it'll be reusable so I'm going to pull out all these nails I'm going to get some of this builder board off and then we will get the opening laid out going to be time consuming. Now it's time to get this window out. I've already removed the trim inside and I've taped some plastic over the window opening. We're supposed to get some rain tonight so I'll have to cover this up um, whatever I don't get finished. So all we really need to do is pry these nails loose from the edge of this flange and they come loose pretty easy because of the builder board. At least you can get behind them pretty easy. Some of them don't want to come loose real easy. They used a multitude of different nails. Last nail. Hopefully I can successfully hold it in there so it doesn't break and get it out in one piece. There we have it. Heavy little bugger. I didn't think it'd be quite that heavy. Now I'm going to continue removing the builder board. I couldn't get to some of these nails because the window was in the way. So I'll get the rest of this builder board off and then we're going to get this thing laid out, framed up, header built, get it going on. I've got all the builder board off, but before I can pull this header or really go any further, I could put my stud in here but I can't really go any further without building a temporary wall inside to support the ceiling. So that's what we're going to do next. And I'm going to show you how. I need to be able to support the roof right here when I pull this header up because that's all the support that it has in this area. And being that I'm going to open it up six feet wide or real close to six feet wide, I'm going to need something to hold this in place to make sure that nothing moves. So I'm going to build a temporary wall probably four two by fours one across the top and maybe some little pieces at the bottom just for those two by fours to sit on screw it into place and then we'll be ready to go outside so i'm going to get started on that and i'll show you the process so even though this two by four is far too long and it needs to be trimmed off it is successfully holding everything in place i'll pull some more measurements i'll go cut the correct length two by fours i'll get a couple of them in and then i'll take this one back out and cut it to the correct length i'm just going to use three two by fours to hold this in place there's no screws in them there's nothing in them they are just hammered into place i'm going to take this plywood and screw it on up here i'm going to center it right there and then I'm just going to let it hang over the end over here. I'm going to get that screwed on and then this will be complete. The temporary wall is complete. Like I say, there's nothing holding it at the bottom. They're just wedged in there with some screws up here. I just want to say if you pull your header out of a window or a door wall or anything like that, that no matter what you watch on any of these videos, there's no guarantee that your roof won't sag. Build your support walls right, build them strong and be confident in what you're doing. I knocked out a little bit of what was here um, before I built the temporary wall because the jack stud is still in place for the header. Apparently maybe the window used to be bigger at one point in time. So I'm going to go ahead and knock this bottom stuff out and then I'm going to put my king stud in on this side and my king stud on that side once I get it located over here and then knock the remainder of everything out.
got the king stud in, but I'm not going to attach it yet. I'm a little bit worried about the floor being unlevel, so until I get that in, get the rest tore out, get it cut out, and see exactly what I got. I want to make sure that the opening is square, but if the floor isn't level, then it's going to be difficult to fit the door in. I would have to make the dimensions a little bigger because it's going to cause the bottom to be off. So I just want to make sure that's not the case. It's looking like it is a little bit off and find out what it is once I get it all cut out. So I'm just going to continue knocking the rest of this out. That is not a proper header. Because I've taken the supports out of the top plate, I'm going to put some screws in. I'm using some two and a half inch spats to construct the screws. It is a double top plate, that's why I want to make sure that they're secured together. I have both of the king studs in, and I'm calling it a night. We'll get it the header in the morning, the jack studs, and get this door in. We've got the bottom plate cut out, but unfortunately it is pouring rain. We've got some tarp set up. It's going to be a difficult day to film, but we'll get it as complete as we can get it. We are going to put a three quarter inch piece of material down here for the door to sit on, which will leave me plenty for the nail flange at the bottom of the door. The jack posts are in on both sides. Not a ton of room for a header. It's going to be just a little under five inches. However, we do have a double top plate, which is going to be nice, and it'll help to give us some nice um, rigidness there for the support. So we're going to get this header built and get it installed. The header basically is going to consist of some 2 by 6s ripped down to the appropriate width, and then a piece of half-inch plywood sandwiched in between them. And I'm going to use construction screws to hold that together. These are the components of our header. We're going to get them all lined up, use some bar clamps on them, get them clamped together, and then get some construction screws in them. The header is installed, toenail are screwed in right here, and then multiple screws up in through to the top plate. So we are got the installation in, and we are ready to get the builder board back installed. Got a wire sticking out for a new outlet we're going to add and uh, we're ready to get some builder board cut and get it on. The weather is finally broke. We've got the, um, the builder board on. It's all secure. We've got the framework on around the outside. Now in most cases you would not have to do this. Your door would be secured to the sheathing or to the builder board, but in my case I do because of the vertical siding. I am now getting ready to flash the threshold. So my ledger flashing, has, I've pulled it up, I've kind of put some staples in it. I'm just going to use some Protecto wrap like you would use around a window and use that to flash this ledger or this sill and we'll be in good shape. The door is going in right now. Good job. 
Oh, Are you in all the way? Yep. You got it? Why is there a gap? Because it's got to get turned down. Alright, I'm going to turn down on the inside. So you don't need to square it or anything? Um, let me just get. I don't think so. How could it not be square the whole thing? So it's an assembly. It. You know what I mean? I feel like you've got a little little bow here though, Jim. It's kinda not all the way in at the bottom down there. Down here? Over in the corner. Here, let me just get a couple of screws in so this. Oh, maybe it is. It just yeah, it looks like I am from the outside. You have to see the door for that. No? No, that's why I want to watch. That's all right. That's all you want, right? Not like you're not going to do it, but now it's secure. No, only oh, two no. screws. I'll be moving on it too much. I lost my audio during this section of the video, unfortunately. And we're just giving the door a good check over, making sure that everything's square, that the bottom is sitting nicely on the sill, and that everything is pushed in tight. And what I'm doing is I'm installing some two inch spacks, waffle head construction screws, or pan head screws in the nail flange to hold the door in place. And the reason that I chose to do that is because the trim on the door and the nail flange were fairly close together, meaning I didn't want to hit the nail flange with the hammer trying to install nails. So I opted for the screws instead. And I think it uh, was probably going to work out better in the long run anyway. The storm has passed. Everything's dried up pretty good. The last thing for me to do is flash these nail flanges. And I'm going to use some door and window flashing. And we are going to get these babies sealed up. We're going to start at the bottom. I've already got it pre-cut. We're going to do the bottom first, then the sides, and then the top. All of them with overlap, so they overlap kind of like a shingle. Meaning this tape will go over the top of the tape coming down the side. I'll show you right now. You want to make sure that the flanges are nice and clean before you start putting the tape on. I just want to go about two inches higher than the door so that my top piece of tape covers that up. Sorry about the lawnmower. Always pull the backing off as you go. Don't try to take all the backing off and then put it on. You'll have a mess on your hands. Just a little bit of time. It's a beautiful morning with the flashing completed on the door. This is a complete job. I still have to get my siding on obviously. But that completes the door installation. I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you did, click on one of those two videos. They're going to pop up right there. And we'll see you soon.